Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about projects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what kind of projects are you working on right now? The job market seems to be entirely fintech where I am and I can't make myself care about other people's money anymore. Well, you should. That's how you get them. But, well, for me, uh, I actually just re I used to work in fintech. Actually, it was my at my last job, uh, but today I work in the automotive industry uh, in the tech department for a uh, well a global corporation. And uh, as for the products that I work on, so the role that I have right now is basically to be a support team member or a internal well it's not necessarily an internal team because it's like uh, think of it as th as this if uh, I, I work primarily with front-end development and full stack development like it's all related to JavaScript in my scenario everything is like in TypeScript and so forth and we're using Next.js etc then React and etc yeah, all of the, these good things right and then we have other back-end teams that well they are in charge of their own products and they have other like they they we oversee the code base if that makes sense like uh, I'll 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 make it I'll hopefully make it into something that makes sense to you. Think of uh, an operations team. So usually when uh, you have an operations team, you you have even if you are running something like DevOps or similar sorts of things, it's very common to have some type of central team that is responsible for the infrastructure, is responsible for being on call or all of these different types of practices where you have some type of kernel or aggregate central team that oversees what all the others are doing and is responsible for taking care of like company-wide initiatives. So a specific product team like they might be responsible for product development on their piece of the system right but this team is responsible for all of the teams and making sure that code quality is up educating and like in things like that if there are teams that need support with uh, how to develop their systems and so forth or uh, doing things like uh, say in my scenario creating standard component libraries that is consumed across like it's like we collaborate with the design team and try to create a standard for the entire corporation like globally for all the teams across the uh, whole world uh, and then things like as an example adding support for content security policies or deprecating support for Internet Explorer because it's no longer needed these sorts of things if that makes sense so that is the role and that's the primary product that I work on uh, other things such as well uh, uh, fixing bugs that exist across the entire system. Uh, uh, just the, just today I was working on fixing a issue where we had a dialogue um, that didn't uh, it, it, it didn't uh, use uh, focus trapping. So basically what that means is that if a person using tab or a screen reader or something like that. If that person tries to tap into the dialogue, they will get into the dialogue, but they will also start getting and they will get out of the dialogue and accessibility practices if you want to be compliant with that sort of thing, which is something that in this specific company wants to be uh, and cares a great deal about. Well, that says that you should not be able to tab outside of the dialogue. And as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of dialogues across a really big system. And so that's the thing that I'm doing right now. Uh, and that's primarily what my role is about. Um, doing, the, well, using the knowledge that I have gathered uh, over the years to, well, basically to monitor, to, I do a lot of code reviews uh, for different teams. A lot, like I basically, the, the way it works in the specific instance is that every product team has Unless, uh, unless they touch, and that's almost always the case, unless they manage to do something that is just completely isolated to their own code owner section of the code, which is almost never the case because they depend on the shared stuff. Uh, me and my co co-workers were a very small, like we we're just a three or three and a half people's team. 
uh, of quote unquote technical experts or whatever they call us. Uh, and we, yeah, every single time somebody makes a pull request to the repository, we basically go through the code and make sure that, you know, the regular stuff is there, they're using good practices, they're writing unit tests, or at least we remind them to do that. Uh, visual regression tests, like all of this sort of stuff. Uh, that's the things uh, that I work on. And I got, I actually got a question very similar to this one, where there was someone who asked me if I would have, uh, because it was an old video I made when I was trying to explain that uh, just because Facebook or Google or whoever calls, right, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should take that job, because it very much depends on the role that they want you. To, uh, to apply for the thing that they're recruiting you for. And uh, I actually said to this, to this uh, because they asked me, would I have taken a role, let's say Facebook or Google or something like that, if it was on the table and if it was front end only. And I, try, and I said that it's, for me, it's never been about front end or back end. Like I really don't care about front end or back end. It's all the same to me. Uh, it's just a problem that needs uh, solving and I, feel like I possess the skills necessary to be productive in regardless of which end of the stack I'm working on in. And when you get to that level, uh, at least for me, uh, what then becomes a little bit of a problem, I think I've ventilated that at one point before, is to find something that feels stimulating or feel, find something that will progress you. And uh, as I've, I've mentioned that to a manager before, uh, my old manager and I said that the only thing I could imagine bringing me further along in my career is either to become a manager type of thing or going into operations and DevOps that's and that's like a full-time thing because that's something that although I know things about it I'm not a master of that area at all and so this role is literally that the intention is for me and my co-workers because we're just one team now but the company uh, has ambitions of course to grow further and further and the as I understand it the idea is that uh, well we're gonna be become multiple teams we're gonna manage our own section own teams and have some type of architect at the top uh, that I work with these days he's very talented so he's perfect for that role and so that's kinda why I thought that this was a very interesting position to have because it basically means that in terms of front-end responsibilities. If you are a mid-level or senior front-end developer, uh, you would probably be able to relate to when I say that it's a complete shit show almost always when you're a front-end developer. It doesn't really matter how much you care about, say, front-end development because all the teams, they almost never care like the other team members, like you're usually working with back-end developers or full-stack developers who kind of sort of do their thing in, in the front-end space. Uh, you have no, almost no ever influence. And I have been having a really old video where I say it feels like working as a maid, where you just sit, or you sit all day in this mess of a front-end code base uh, with really no chance of fixing the thing apart from the things that you can do yourself. And it crushes you, so it crushes your soul because it's like, it's uh, the code is just getting worse and worse, and the only person really trying to fix things are is you. But you don't really have the buy-in from the company to do it in a serious manner. And I've always said that the only thing that will work ever I've ever, never seen anything else work when it comes to sustaining a good front-end code base or a JavaScript code base or a TypeScript code base over time is to have a central team that manages that aspect of the of the responsibility of all the different teams and that's why I have this job or that's why I was so interested in taking this position because that is literally the thing I'm doing it is uh, ultimately my responsibility to make sure that we keep the code quality up to snuff and that we have all the tools that the team ne teams they need and the education and like all of the content and documentation and so forth so that we can maintain a, a, a large system or a large project over time. So what I want you to take away from this is that these days I work in the automotive industry. Uh, I work as a front-end developer, but for those of you who care about those semantics, it's uh, probably more of a full-stack full stack JavaScript, TypeScript type of role, because 
hey, I, we are using the we're building things at the entire st uh, from the entire stack basically, uh, and I also as I mentioned my work as part of a supporting team, like an internal team that whose main responsibility is to take on company-wide initiatives that affect all the team product teams, provide documentation, create standardized components, making sure that like test coverage is there, making sure that accessibility concerns are addressed and setting up visual regression testing, like all of these sorts of things. That's, uh, that's what I do. Have a great day.